the uh, wheels. I got a good bargain recently. Not one, but two other chests you made it. This one's an email, three phase uh, model SDM, 10 to 60 amp pair, 66.6 revolutions per kilowatt hour, 4 wire, 50 hertz, and 3 times 240 volt. Okay, yours is a single disc, three phase meter, so it's got potential and voltage coil, or potential coil and a low coil at the bottom. I see one there, there's one at the back, and a potential coil up there, another one over here. So, you've got one at the side and one at the back. So it's basically three of these meters in one. That's basically how it works. The load rule is definitely calibrated than the, um, the normal three uh, single phase meters. So you can... Timing marks right in the middle, you got to look carefully at your timing on the wheel. This one doesn't actually have any numbers on it, and that one here does. Yeah. This one's done 46,177 and a half, so it's halfway between a 7 and the 8. This one doesn't go up to it, doesn't have a 10,000th unit. It just goes a 1,000, that's it. So this one is actually done 7,137 kilowatt hours. This is a 5 for 20 amp pair. 800 revolutions per kilowatt hour. Single phase, two wires, so it's pretty straightforward. 50 hertz, 230 volts. So this is an old MCO, which is um, known as Electricity Meter Manufacturing Company, which later formed a conglomerate, email, which stood for Electricity Meter and Allied Industries Limited, which they went on to making um, wire cords. I think some household mains water pressure pumps, that the old Davy pumps, they were called here, the brand. Had, the, had an iron ore company which was bought out by One Steel, a padlock company which was sold to S. Ablo of Sweden, and now the, the original meter company is now bought out by Ampi. He still use the email name on their meters in Australia. They use um often they call they often call them email Westinghouse or email metering now, so it's not really an acronym anymore, but a brand. They're still making some of their meters in Australia too, which is a good thing. This one here was last tested in 1978. I get this and here going first. They got missing um, three terminal screws and it's a uh, terminal cover. So I'm going to have to try and make a replacement for that. And find some screws to fit in there for the wire. It's got a bit of chunk taken out of it, which is unfortunate, but that's not really a big deal. <coughs> okay, viewers, it's all wired up. Supply. Active in, load, uh, neutral in, active out, load out to my load. So I got line and load. Borrowing a wall outlet from my ballast box because I ran out of spare power points. Another good thing about this email company, they also made car parts as well, like outnaters, I think carburetors, starter motors, I think as well, which are now been um, now made by Bosch. So yeah, there's a lot of history behind these. So let's sit this up and give it a test. Once I know what's working good. Do an accuracy test on it. If that passes, I'm going to clean it up and make a good terminal cover for it. I'll just take one of the um, extra terminal screws out of the neutral here and just use it for the active. So I'll get me um, set it up and we'll put a load in it and see how well it works. Alright, my test load is a 600 watt vacuum cleaner. Alright, let's plug this in and see if it works. There you go, it's working. Alright, power up. Very responsive, the brake magnets stop the disc perfectly still, which is good. Alright, now let's wire that up with it. I'll get that to advance to the next um, notch there on that unit, so it got something as a guide to start from. I'll do an accuracy test on it. It's obviously going to measure a tiny bit more because of the potential coil this meter is going to use a tiny bit. So let's set this up and see how it goes. Alright, we've got a good head start there. Dead on. That unit's dead on, so they've both got a good head start, so I know where to start from. And in theory, this should uh, be twice as, spin twice as fast as that one, as that's a 400 and this is an 800 revolution per kilowatt hour. So this thing should be one fast meter, so let's plug in. 
and begin the test. Three, two, one. Power's on. Okay. Look how fast that one is going. It's the fastest motor in my collection so far. It's obviously going to measure a little bit more, as I said earlier, because they've got a potential coil on that. We're putting at least probably 10 watts max, if that. So, keep an eye on that dial there, and that advanced as well. That should have advanced exactly the same also, so. Look at that meter go. So far, so good. It's pretty accurate. I think this meter is still accurate after 50 years or so since it was um, made. This would be about 50 years old or even older, this meter, as I said earlier. So it'll be at least 52 years old. So this this pass is accurate and means the accuracy magnets, which are those things there, are still perfectly hold uh, got their full charge. Well the heat is getting warm. Yep, pretty good. Ah, oh, cat in the background there. Hear yeah, the cat meowing. Okay, in three, two, and a tiny bit more yet. Let's see. What about now? Power's off. Exactly one unit of advanced. That's exactly one little unit there, advanced. So that meter is accurate after 52 years or so. So that's good. Another thing I forgot to um, do. What I'll do now? Date got our uh, date arrived. So date date purchase. In other words, write the reading down. So it's got 7,137.9 prior to the test. Accuracy test passed. Same on that one. I was carrying some documentation as a record, so I know what reading they've had when they first got them and the last test results, so it's good, good to have some documentation with that too, so you know the meters are accurate. So now, I'm going to start clearing this up. Okay, here we this one nice and clean. Bit of a muck on that. Next thing I'm going to do is just make a terminal cover for it and that's it. And I'll move on to this one. So for now, thanks for watching.